Coach, and want to get the secondary some work to work through some of the issues that you saw uh, last week. Now you got two option teams coming up. How do you measure their progress while still preparing for a team that's yep. not really going to test them that way the next couple of weeks? Well, it is what it is. Uh, so we measure. We have to measure it in practice. But you still have to execute regardless of what the plan is and who you're playing. We have a plan. We have calls. You still got to read the signal properly. Uh, you know, we signal in practice every day. Uh, you still have to line up properly, uh, inside, outside, proper depth. You still have to put your eyes and be a discipline player, play in and play out. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you have a job to do, and, and just be consistent in doing your job, all right? Yeah, it might be a different next week or two weeks. We're playing Syracuse, uh, whenever that is. And then after, aren't they after Georgia Tech? Yeah, so we play Syracuse. Well, they're going to be four wides and five wides and, you know, different deal. But you still got to put your eyes on the right thing. You still have a call. You still have an alignment. You still have an assignment. You still have eyes and play discipline with. That never changes. The style of play that week may change, but those things never change. And so that's really, I guess, the, to answer your question, how you measure that, is how consistently do you do your job? Uh, do you line up properly? Uh, are, are your eyes on the right things? You know, and, and not turning people loose or not missing signals, whatever it may be. Uh, so that's, to me, the measure. And then, and then we go against each other in practice. Uh, you know, uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, we go good on good. So it's not like they're not also going to have to, you know, kind of play our base defense uh, with a different style. Those mistakes that you saw Saturday as you go back and look at the film, was it more mental then than the technical or maybe oh, their guy making a play? Totally. I mean, we had, we had a million mental errors. Uh, it's just very disappointing. And, you know, we, and it's like we just all of a sudden quit playing defense. I mean, we played a really good first half. And like I said, we, you know, and then offensively, we didn't put people away. I mean, we, we've got two situations. And, and, I mean, I thought we should have had 21, 24 points at half. It's just really disappointing because I, I knew, all right, you let people hang around and you're on the road and this is a really talented team. It's a couple of plays. And, and then defensively, we go out there, and then we get up 21-6. to six, And you're like, okay, we're getting control here. And then all of a sudden, two plays later, they score. 70-yard play. I mean, like, we got one person playing defense on the back end. This guy's running wide open. And, and it's, a, it's it just total bust. So that's mental. Uh, and, and that's coaching uh, as well. It's, it's, on, it's on all of us. Uh, you know, the safety read the signal wrong. Uh, and so he's, he's down in the box. He's, middle, he's supposed to be middle field safety. He might have picked it off or we sack him. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, heck. Uh, it, it's one thing, like I said, there's some plays you just tip your hat. You just go, well, that was an unbelievable play. Uh, I mean, you're, everybody's there. And this, the, the, so they hit the 70-yarder. The, well, the next play, if you go back and look, we got like nine people playing defense in the end zone. And I don't even know how the guy throws the ball in there and their guy catches it. It's unbelievable. Well, you just tip your hat and move on to the next play. All right? Sometimes you just, the other team makes good plays. But, but it's the big play bus. And, and so that, that lets people back in games. And so we've got we've to stay focused and disciplined for four quarters and play four quarters of, of disciplined football. And, and people make plays, they make plays. But let's don't let it be a result of just base stuff. I mean, I mean, base stuff that we busted. And uh, so, and then the flip side of it offensively, you know, we got a chance to put people away. We got to put them away. You know, and that's the difference between offense and defense. Okay, it's third and one, no big deal. And, and we got a gap call and we don't block a gap. I mean, we just completely, I mean, we got, we're going to get more than one yard. But we just completely don't do a very basic thing, all right, by two people, a very basic. Well, that's okay. We'll just punt the ball. You know, it's not like they scored. But on defense, you, you bust, it's a touchdown. And that's the difference between offense and defense. And so, you know, we've got to clean up some stuff on both sides. Uh, and, you know, and we did some good things in special teams. You know, I, I, I mean, the block field goal was huge, absolutely monstrous. Um, and uh, so there's a lot of room for improvement. Uh, coaching and playing, and, and 
I don't have any doubt we'll we'll get better. If you're looking at consistency, what's that? Yeah, and Nolan, 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 Nolan right now to me is is really demonstrating um, that he can he can play high level for us. Really encouraged by what we've seen with him. And uh, you know, Kayvon uh, made a couple mental mistakes, but but man, what a what a what a relentless player he is. He's going, you know, he missed some opportunities and things like that. But he's, I just love his will to win and his effort. And uh, he's going to get better. Uh, same thing with Tanner. Tanner just sometimes will get undisciplined. He'll start staring in the backfield. And he's a guy that's got to be a disciplined player. Uh, but also did some good things. And uh, uh, Denzel really encouraged with him. Uh, he had one mental error, one really bad mental error. Uh, but the same thing, he's really starting to grow his confidence. That's why you see us playing those guys. I mean, you know, we're playing them. You know, in all situations, because we have a lot of confidence in all four of them, and we're trying to, we're trying to grow our team because those four guys, we think are ready to play and can play winning football for us. Uh, so sometimes you just got to kind of grow through it a little bit. Uh, but but Denzel made a huge play uh, on the ball uh, over on their sideline down there, going into the red zone. So he's he's definitely coming, but. We we made we made some mistakes for sure, but I'm pleased with all four of our safeties at this point. If you're looking at consistency, you keep talking about consistency. Is there anybody at this point in the season that is playing consistent, winning football, or more consistent, or is it across oh, the board? We have several guys. We have a bunch of guys that I think you know we got two games, uh, but we have several guys that I think have played very well in two games. A bunch of them. You know, I talked about Hyde. I talked about Ankrum. Two guys that have really played very well for us. Um, and then uh, flip side on the defense. I think our defensive line is playing well, very consistent after two games. Um, you know, so I think Trayvon Mullen, very very consistent player. Uh, so I mean, there's there's a lot of lot of guys that I think fit that. But you know, we need 11. Uh, it's, it's hard to be it's hard to be great on offense and defense if if you got seven out of 11 or eight out of 11. You know, uh, or five out of 11 playing winning football. You know, we need – we need, and we don't ask anybody to be perfect. We have a you – know, winning grade is not 100%. You know, we have a winning grade at each position. And, and we, need, we need to improve our consistency across the board on both sides of the ball and special teams. Coach, the Spires had a relatively good game. He did. Um, had the 51-yarder and, and a few inside the 20. But on that last one that you really needed a good one, he had the 22 yards on the rugby punt. How yep. close is it right now between uh, Spires and Ken? Yeah, that was a disaster. Uh, but I, I actually was very uh, pleased with him. He, he, he punted the ball very well. Uh, we, we went we, – we rugbyed the last one. Uh, Dexter didn't get his guy on the pump. Should have been blocked the pump before. And uh, this came right up the middle on, the, on our shield, and, and we didn't we didn't block him. I don't know how the guy did. I guess his eyes were closed because I mean he should have blocked it. Uh, so right there at the end, they got no timeouts. We were trying to hold the ball a little bit and just and just kind of get it on the ground, work a little clock, you know, uh, kind of a safe play, try to negate a return at all, and uh, and and have a field position with no timeouts, uh, with not a lot of time. But it, you know, <laughs> it didn't work out. He rushed it. He thought he thought that he had pressure and he didn't, and he rushed it and just kind of shanked it. Uh, so that was a that was a that wasn't how we intended it to be. Uh, if no one was going to punt it 22 yards, might have done something different. But you know, hindsight's 2020. Uh, but other than that, he played really well. He was very encouraged, and uh, and and we still do have competition there. Uh, Carson is competing every day, and and uh, you know we'll see how it, how it continues to play out, but. I thought that was that game looked like Will of last year, the first three quarters of the season. Uh, so that part was encouraging. It was just unfortunate on the last play. That was not good. When it comes to helping players stand with in a hurricane type situation, what exactly are you allowed to provide? Like lodging and food? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can help uh, for the immediate family uh, is what we can we can help. I think. Uh, Last year, they approved Trayvon's family came up, and I think they actually were able to stay with Brent uh, uh, last year. Uh, so, you know, that's just that's that's really good uh, that you have the opportunity to to help uh, in those situations. Talk kind of common sense. Along those same lines, I know y'all opened your facility to the Citadel last year. <coughs> 
have any of these Coastal teams reached out, would you be open to that again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we help anybody that, that, that needs it. And uh, I think actually that I think Charleston Southern uh, has reached out to Woody. And uh, he mentioned that to me yesterday. They might come up uh, maybe tomorrow and Thursday and uh, in practice. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're more than willing to help anybody that we can. A couple of weeks ago, you were talking about the identity of 2018 comes in football. You want it to be a special team. Even though it's early in the season, do you think that's coming more and more true, or is there some ways to go in that area? Well, we've had two pretty solid games, uh, so I'm, I'm encouraged by that. Uh, we, we, we did turn and got two guys loose on kickoff, that one kickoff return the other night. That, that's, that was disappointing, but, uh, uh, you know, we're improving. I mean, our coverage has been good for the most part, although we, you know, we had two 50-plus yard punts. And we got to clean up some technique. Cornell, for example, would, did a, I mean, his effort was awesome down the field, and he's got a guy dead to rights, and and he just didn't have good technique to finish the play. And and instead, you know, so so we had we had we gave up two and a half first downs on punt return, and and that, that's critical. So uh, we got we got to clean up some things uh, for sure. Uh, but I like what we've done at field goal protection. Obviously, we we. Our push at field goal block, our effort has been awesome. We, I mean, it was a huge play in the game to block that field goal the other night. Uh, we've, made a, we've made a long kick. Hugel's been very consistent uh, with his extra points. <coughs> and, uh, and then Potter has, has, you know, he's a young guy that, that has shown that he's, he's got a pretty special leg. So uh, at this point, after two games, I, I think our special teams have made a difference. For certainly the first game, I mean, we had you know two punt returns for 87 yards. We didn't really have a lot of op opportunity the other night in punt return. Uh, our kickoffs have been awesome. We've made field goals, uh, and uh, you know, again, I thought we punted. We didn't really punt the ball uh, in the first game, but uh, to the very end of the game. But I thought the other night in the critical situation, our, our punts were were pretty good. Uh, we still averaged 40 a punt, and that was with a 22 yarder <laughs> mixed in at the end, um, but um, so, so far, so good. Justin is, man, he's been a real bright spot in two games. He's another one of those guys you talked about. I mean, he, he's been very consistent, very encouraged. Uh, he's quietly put together a great camp and a very good two games, very productive. Uh, he's just kind of a lunch pail guy, man. Uh, big motor, high effort, heavy handed. Physical and uh, and just you know dependable, and then Xavier, uh, we mixed him in on some third down stuff the other night, trying to get his 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 speed in the game. And I think the very first play he was in there, he had a hit on the quarterback. Uh, he's he's just going to get better. Um, pleased with him, two games and got some special teams work as well with him, and you'll continue to see that. Uh, so encouraged. Well, uh, you know, I'd rather not have him in coverage in that situation. I'd like for him to rush quarterback, but the call dictated that. We had a peel call, and the, the positive is he knew what to do, you know, uh, and, and it wasn't bad. I mean, it was kind of a – it probably could have gone either way. The ball kind of skipped a couple times. Uh, it wasn't going to be complete, but, you know, it was – he was where he was supposed to be. At least he, at least he was aware enough in that situation to to do to attempt to do his job, you know, and and make it on appeal call uh, with that particular call of defense that we had. But um, you know, we don't want to make a living with with, with Xavier uh, playing coverage. Uh, he can do it. I mean, and he will as we get as he matures and grows up. He will for sure. He'll be a, he'll be able to cover anybody. That guy can fly. Uh, but but right now we want to. We'll see if we can keep the game a little simpler for him and let him <laughs> let him mature uh, into his role. I think ETN had eight carries. Was that a function of being behind the chain on a regular basis? Yeah, well, he had 11 touches. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it, like I said, we only had 55 snaps that, that were really worth a darn. And uh, it was a combination of how inefficient we were, how poor on third down we were, and uh, – and just, you know, kind of some of the situations in the game. But yeah, he's got to touch the ball. Uh, Feaster's got to touch the ball. I mean, we, we got to I – mean, we know that. Uh, and it just didn't really work out for Feaster well the other night. He had a, a rotation, a couple rotations in where he didn't get the ball, and then he had a couple 
you know, bad plays where we got blown up on a Falcon and then we, we, we messed the sprint draw up, you know, just poor execution, uh, but not a lot of opportunity. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, we, we're an 80, 85-plus snap team. And, and, you know, E.T.'s got to touch it. I mean, he's got to touch the ball. He had three big plays in the passing game uh, for us. And, and uh, uh, you know, Feaster is, is a guy that, that you'd like to see about, uh, to me, I'd like to see about 35, 40 touches uh, with our backs, uh, some form or fashion, you know, uh, depending on the type of game and, and, and those type of things. Um, and, and then, you, you know, that's, that's a lot of other touches left for the quarterbacks and the receivers and tight ends and so forth. Uh, but, but yeah, we gotta, we've got to get it going uh, and, and do a better job of, of making sure those guys touch the ball. And, uh, but, again, style of game, situations of the game can dictate certain things. But uh, we, 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 have to, we have to get a little bit better there and making sure those guys touch it. The absence of Garrett Williams affect you guys a little bit at the point of attack there in the rushing game? Well, he, he, it doesn't make us better. I mean, I thought, you know, that wasn't a big factor the other night. Um, it, but, I mean, it, it just wasn't with, our, with the issues that we had the other night. It wasn't because Garrett wasn't there. Uh, but Garrett makes us better. There's no doubt. And, and I expect him to be back this week. He was ready to play last week. You know, we just, we just weren't as confident as, as, as coaches uh, and just really – but he felt good during pregame and all that. Uh, but looked good last night. We'll see how he does today and tomorrow. And, and I do expect him to be ready to go this weekend if we don't have some type of setback or something. But he makes us better. There's no doubt. I mean, he, he really brings a hard edge. And it's not just in the box. It's on the, it's on the edge, too. It's on the perimeter. Uh, so he's a good football player. And, uh, you know, to, to, to have him available is a, a real plus for us. Today is the anniversary of 9-11. I'm just wondering where you were that day and what this day means to you. Yeah. Uh, well, I was driving from Tuscaloosa. Uh, I was out of coaching in uh, 01. It was, I'd been working at AIG Baker for six months. It was, I was into my sixth month. I had started April 2nd. And uh, so it was about an hour and 15, 20-minute drive every day uh, from Tuscaloosa to 280. Uh, where I was really was kind of near my hometown, to be honest with you, not too far. Uh, but I was on uh, 459, and I just remember, I don't know, I was listening to one of the radio stations, local radio stations, listening to Quark and Kelly. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I was listening to somebody talking football, uh, talking something. And uh, so I used, to, I used to use that time, that hour and something, I used to use that time. That was, that was prayer time, quiet time. And then I'd just kind of catch up what was going on, listening to the sports world. And I, was, I wasn't coaching. It was my first time to not be coaching. I'd think about uh, what I had to do that day at work or whatever. And, but I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. Uh, in fact, I was telling Kath last night, golly, man, I can't believe that's been 17 years ago. Uh, but I was driving down 459 in uh, my green tundra. Uh, I love my green tundra. Uh, and it's ironic, I still got a tundra. But but um, I was driving down the road, and all of a sudden they came over and interrupted on, on the on the radio and just started talking about, you know, uh, there's been a plane crash. You know, at first it was like they just thought it was like a crash. They didn't know what was going on. And um, I'm like, wow. And then all of a sudden it comes back, and then it just, this you know, everything gets consumed on this on the radio that I'm listening to. And I'm just, in my mind, I'm going – man, this can't be real. Uh, it was just, it was very surreal. It was a very surreal moment. And so I listened on the way and then I get to the office and, uh, and I just, I mean, it was, it was, it was a very emotional day. It was an incredibly emotional day for everyone. It was a scary day. And, um, um, I just, we, we, as a company, I mean, we just, there was nothing done that day. We just sat and we watched TV and we listened and nobody could believe what we were seeing. I mean, it was just, just heartbreaking and gut wrenching, and and just an incredibly emotional. And uh, just remember thinking about my my three year old and my two year old, and you know the world that they're going to grow up in. And I, I I just it was it was unbelievable. 
um, and I, and it impacted so many things in this country. Um, and I remember, you know, at that time I, I was, I had a project in Las Vegas, I had a project in Kansas and, you know, I, I remember they shut all flights down. You couldn't, you couldn't do anything. And, uh, we had some, some of my coworkers were stuck at places cause we were a company, we were doing stuff all over the country. And, uh, so it was just a, it was a, it was a very, very emotional time, I think for everybody. And, uh, I think it's great to take some time today and pause and reflect on all the people uh, uh, who lost their lives, uh, the impact that that had on all their families, uh, the children who lost moms and dads, uh, and, uh, and then all the unbelievably brave and heroic people that I saw that day, you know, they were saying, you know, there's one thing to, uh, to, to, there's a difference between running away from a fire and running to it and people that were running to it and through it and, and just amazing uh, her, uh, heroism uh, from so many people and the policemen.